Are we rolling? How do you know if it's rolling? I'm Sam, and this is Katie, and we're here at Sony's Digital Media Production Center in Los Angeles. A lot has changed since the last 101 video we brought you, including a major upgrade to our studio. We're here in our virtual production lab, and this is our crystal LED wall designed specifically for virtual production. Today, we're going to present our first ever 201, or 102. I like 201 better, whatever you want to call it. This is the next lesson in our Venice series. We're going to dive deep into the Venice 2 and version 3 software. We'll quickly cover some of the basics as well as go over some of the biggest changes. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the basics of the Venice 101. With that, take it away, Katie. All right, good job, Sam. Thank you. We're going to start out by covering the differences between original Venice and Venice 2. First, the Venice 2 records ExoCN internally, unlike the original Venice, which requires the R7 recorder. This means the Venice 2 is 44 millimeters shorter and about one pound lighter. The Venice 2 imager modes go as high as 8.6K32 and as low as 5.4K169. To change our imager modes, we will press the menu button once. This takes us to the easy access menus. Make sure you are in the project menu by selecting the white dot item key just above it. Scroll to imager mode and select it. This will give you all your options for imager modes. Alternatively, if you push and hold the menu button for three or more seconds, this will take you into the deep menus. Scroll to project, then to basic setting, and select it on imager mode. If you're shooting with anamorphic glass, there is now an easy access de-squeeze option in the project menu. Like the original Venice, the 239 imager modes allow for higher frame rates. 5.5K239 can run as high as 120 frames per second, and 8K239 will go as high as 72 frames per second. To enter into high frame rate mode, we select the white dot above FPS on the top left. At the bottom left, push the button to select variable, then scroll to the desired frame rate. Hit set to go back into your project frame rate. Select the button above FPS and switch back over to fixed and select set. The Venice 2 also has dual ISO, but the bases are 800 and 3200. Select the white dot key at the top center. We are currently at our 800 base. To change to our 3200 base, push the white dot key at the bottom left, and it is a two finger button push, so you do not accidentally change bases in the middle of a setup. There is crossover within the two indexes. This means it is possible to be at an 800 base, but rate the camera at 3200. By doing this, you are evenly distributing your dynamic range, where the highlight latitude is at eight stops and your shadow latitude Attitude is at eight stops. When in 3200 base and scrolling down to 800, you are redistributing your latitude to 12 stops in the shadows and four stops in the highlights. Any of these options are just tools for capturing your story. We recommend you test and explore what works for you. Never forget the iconic internal NDs. These are physical glass in two turrets that rotate between themselves to achieve eight stops of ND in single stop increments. We can change your NDs by pushing the white dot keys at the bottom left. You can toggle between NDs by using the scroll wheel and selecting in on it, or you can use the keys to go up and down and then press set. Cut. Now we're into chapter two. A new feature in Venice 2 is the option to record in ProRes at 4K. If we go to the side of the camera, we push menu to take us to the easy access menus. In project, scroll to recording format. We have our usual flavors of 16-bit ExoCN available. XT, ST, and LT. We are often having the conversation with post-production regarding ST versus LT. ExoCN ST is commonly used for many productions, and ExoCN LT provides a great balance between quality and budget. We also have three levels of ProRes. 4444 XQ, 4444, and 4... What is a better way to say that? Quad 4 XQ, Quad 4, and 422 HQ. Notice if you select a ProRes option, the camera will reboot. The camera only takes four seconds to make a picture and you can roll in about 16 seconds. It is important to note that you can either record in ExoCN or you can record in ProRes, but not both simultaneously. If you choose to record in ProRes, the files will be in a 16.9 or 17.9 canvas. So there may be letterboxing or pillars depending on the imager mode you chose. And with version three update, you can now record ProRes in an anamorphic imager mode and the de-squeeze will be applied to the recording. Here is a quick representation showing the different storage requirements for ExoCN and ProRes in the Venice 2 8K sensor. With the newer sensor and higher resolution also comes a faster card. The S66 cards are available at one terabyte capacity. The S48 cards, typically used with the original Venice, are also a viable option for the Venice 2. S48 cards unlock most of what the camera has to offer, but are not fast enough to capture at 8.6K32 ExoCN XT. 
To learn more about what will work for you and your project's needs, go to sonycine.com, find Data Calculator, and select. From here, you can choose your project settings, and the calculator will not only tell you the file size, but also which card is fast enough for your Venice 2 settings. You can also go to Resources, then Tools, and scroll to Venice 2 Record Times for a visual representation of which cards will work at different settings. For a snapshot of Venice 2 recording formats, imager modes, resolutions, and high frame rates, from the Sony Cine website, navigate to Venice 2, and scroll down to the recording formats, and download. Both the Venice 2 and the original Venice are native E-mount. To access this, we're going to use a 2.5 millimeter tool and loosen the six screws on the outside of the PL adapter. These screws are now captive, yay! Once the E-mount is removed, the professional E-mount is revealed. There is a collar that locks the lens in place as opposed to twisting the lens to lock in place. To secure the lens, we first release the collar by flipping the lock switch up. The white dots of the mount and of the collar should line up. Then place the lens with its white dot lined up to the collar. Turn the collar counterclockwise to secure the lens in place. If you're using an E-mount lens without a hard stop iris, you will want to assign user buttons to adjust the aperture. Push the user button and select edit at the bottom right. Select user one and scroll all the way to the bottom to iris open. Then select user two. Scroll all the way to the bottom and select iris close. From the user menu, you can now push the white dot key above user 2 to close down on the iris, 1 16th of a stop, or you can push and hold the key to adjust the iris in one stop increments. Thank you. Lens interface voltage. <laughs> you should just make Ben slate the chapters. <laughs> Venice 2 has an added feature of allowing PL mount voltage to soft start at 8 volts and increase to 24 volts. To change the setting, press and hold the menu button Navigate to Technical, then to Lens Configuration. Once you're within the Lens Configuration menu, you can change the PL mount voltage to a range of 8 volts to 24 volts, or you can leave it at 24 volts. We often get the question, why is my lens metadata not passing to a camera when using signature primes or zooms? The solution is simple. You must set the voltage to 24 volts because the lens requires it to pass metadata. It's simple, you must. The EL200 was first introduced with original Venice and is the same viewfinder used for Venice 2. The viewfinder is 1920 by 1080 OLED and allows for quick motion picture response with minimal blur or ghosting. OLED allows for higher, more accurate contrast ratios because black is off. The viewfinder has a diopter with an indicator adjustment ring. It does not represent a diopter measurement. There are three user buttons. By default, A is set to focus magnification, B is set to false color, and C is set to viewfinder overlay. There's also a menu button and back button, along with a select or set dial. There are three different menu options you can access using various combinations. To access the basic menu, simply press the menu button once. You can use the dial to toggle through the menu pages. Select in on the dial to adjust the values. This basic menu is where you can adjust your brightness, peaking intensity, contrast, and preset. To go to the setup menu, press in on the dial and push menu at the same time. This will allow you to adjust the knee, tally, brightness, and turn the eye sensor on and off. The eye sensor will turn the screen to white when it senses it is being exposed to a strong light source for a long period of time to protect the OLED. As soon as your face is within proximity, the white field will disappear and the image will display again. To access the Venice viewfinder menu, press and hold the menu button for about three seconds. This will take you to the viewfinder display and viewfinder function menus in the Venice. Viewfinder display allows you to adjust things like viewfinder LUT, overlay, and frame lines. Viewfinder function allows you to change your user buttons, zebras, and you can turn double speed scan off and on. Double speed scan is a great function for shooting fast moving objects. It doubles the frames of the record frame rate up to 60 hertz. So if you're shooting at a project frame rate of 24, then the viewfinder would refresh at 48 frames per second. If you're operating at a project frame rate of 60, then the viewfinder is already refreshing at the maximum of 60 frames per second. We have received feedback from the industry to allow access of the full Venice menus from the viewfinder. This has not been implemented, but we have passed this note on to the engineers. Venice 2 SDI functionality has been updated to show EI changes when in log mode, and SDI 1 and 2 have been updated to not only see EI changes when in log, but will also display a LUT. SDI 1 and 2 remain clean outputs, meaning no camera information will be output to monitor. 
you can apply frame lines on 1 and 2 if you're outputting 4K. 3 and 4, along with monitor out and HDMI out, can be dirty, meaning camera information and frame lines will output to the monitor if needed. This one we dedicate to the DITs. Version 3 also brings us a log legal output. S-Log3 was designed to be processed as a full range signal via SDI outputs. However, a typical configuration for external LUT boxes and monitors require legal range inputs. To set your SDIs to a legal log output from the home menu, go to your LUT output configuration page at the bottom center. Select the output and scroll to log legal. You can apply this to any of the SDI outputs or your HDMI output. This will provide a scaled legal range S-Log signal. Another update to the SDI outputs with version 3 includes an online frame line generator that allows you to create user frame lines. To load your user frame lines, insert your SD card where the XML file is saved. Press and hold menu, scroll to monitoring, then load user frame lines. Load SD card. Select which slot you would like to load to. On the next page, select the file you would like to load and hit OK. Back out and go to user frame line 1. At the top, go into select. From the drop-down list, toggle to user file. You can then scroll to select user file and choose which frame line file you would like to apply. Let's make sure we have the correct frame lines assigned to the output. From the home menu, press menu once and go to monitoring. Toggle to your correct output. Select in and assign line A or B to the output. Select in again to navigate to the setup page. Scroll to user frame line 1 or 2 and make sure the boxes are checked by pushing in on the scroll wheel. You can also change what is assigned to the user frame line by toggling over and selecting variable or preset from that drop down list. Some cinematic multicam shows have implemented remote color grading using Pomfort's LiveGrade. This allows you to grade the live output of a Venice over LAN network. From the side of the camera, in the home view, click on the look button. Select Edit Look and choose the desired LUT file in the User 3D LUT menu. Then go to ASC CDL Process and select CDL Look. Then go to ASC CDL Select and select the LiveGrade.CDL from the menu. For more information or an in-depth look into LiveGrade, visit kb.pomfort.com slash LiveGrade and look for Sony Venice 2 Remote Color Grading. RCP mode is a special configuration that allows the Venice to be configured by an RCP like a broadcast camera or system camera. RCP stands for Remote Control Panel and it is typically used in live multicam situations for live grading and shading. When in RCP mode, the camera allows for various paint control items through the paint menu. To engage RCP mode, press and hold the menu button to go into the deep menus. Scroll to technical, then scroll all the way to the bottom until you see special configuration. At the top of this menu, select RM slash RCP paint control and turn it to on. A prompt will appear cautioning you to create an all file before proceeding as all settings will reset to factory defaults. Select run. The camera will reboot. This only takes a handful of seconds and right out of the gate, notice that the EI control area is now displayed as gain. You can still change your base ISO as usual. With version 3, when you set your input color space to sgamut3 or sgamut3.cine, you can now apply your creative LUTs to the output of the camera and you're still able to paint the image using the RCP.